majority of us think it, so I'm just gonna blurt it out. Iron Man 2 is nowhere near as good as the first one. When I first watched Iron Man 2, I disliked it a lot, like, with almost a passion. Then I watched it again and I found it, it was reasonable. I enjoyed it just a tiny little bit. And then on this latest watch, I I can see that there really is an excellent movie in there, but it is just, it's badly built. Even though it is nice to have a chuckle every now and again, and it, it really does have some really great chuckle moments, I feel like it goes too far on the comedy side when I felt like this film needed more suspense. And it really does have silly moments that I can't get past. You know, Mickey Rourke skipping with electric whips and destroying a car. Just <laughs> thinking about it now, I'm just like, what am I watching? Uh, but silly moments aside, Mickey Rourke is a really great villain. When I first watched it, I, I didn't enjoy the film and I didn't really enjoy his performance either. And when I look at it now, I realise he's such a subtle performance. Rourke could have got in danger with this character. He could have really, he could have gone full pantomime and he really does avoid that. He does it so well, it's very slick. And I really did find it fitting as well that they got an actor to play alongside Downey Jr. who also had a claim to fame in the 80s and then there was a point where his career was just like down on its look. It's just a really great parallel. I also find it quite fitting that they would get Sam Rockwell to play Justin Hammer, seeing as he was considered for the role of Tony Stark. I do love Sam Rockwell's performance in this film, but it is like those cakes that have all the yummy good stuff in the center and coated with all the bad stuff on the outside. It's a great performance in a not so great film. And Robert Downey Jr. is just as good as he is in the first film. You can find that some actors get bored when they come to do the sequel, but he is on it. Though in this film, he is more cocky and arrogant. Now, part of me loved that they went for a cheekier side to him, but with the character showing a selfish side, it, it does make it hard for you to follow his journey as he is just not quite that lovable arsehole anymore, but just an arsehole. Iron Man 2 is where we see the introduction to Natasha Romanoff, aka Black Widow. And it was a really exciting time as a young woman to see a woman kick ass in films. I don't think I'd been able to like look up to someone like that since Xena, the warrior princess. Scarlett Johansson is beautiful, smart, and she is an appealing actress, but the dancer within me can just not forgive how heavy-footed she is. I know of all the things to criticise, it's her elephant feet. I like people to kick ass with grace, you see. ACDC have never done a greatest hits album, but because of this film, you now have one. The soundtrack is a little bit overbearing. Uh, the bad guy music when Rourke is on screen is just hilarious. Okay, loud orchestral music, we get it. Here's the bad guy. The question is, was Justin Theroux the right person for the job? He had just done Traffic Thunder as a writing credit before taking the screenplay for this film. It's probably a lot to handle. A lot of carrying going on there. Uh, so that does make me question whether it was too soon for him. Oh, and the Marvel interference on this film is a huge hindrance. They are shoving Avengers references in left, right, and centre, and it really does affect the pacing. Uh, you know, the it's the pacing is just it clunky and it really does affect the film's independence and it just feels rushed. Thanks for watching, be sure to like the video and please comment in the box below with your thoughts and feelings on Iron Man 2. And do look out for more reviews of mine on the MCU.